Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, I had a subscriber reach out to me on the channel. They left a comment on one of my Victor Two Stroke videos that their Victor lawnmower was under revving and what could they do about it? Well, coincidentally, I was out at dinner with some friends the other night and one of my friends commented about their Victor Two Stroke, which was under revving. So I said to them, bring it over. That's this lawnmower right here. So today, I'm gonna to investigate why this Victor Two Stroke is under revving and we're gonna fix it here today in this video. So let's get into it. So before we do anything, let's hook up my digital tachometer and let's start the mower up and let's have a look for ourselves what the RPM is. So give her a few primes and pull that handle. So clearly when the mower was in the full rev position up there on the throttle, it was only revving at about the 2850, 2900 RPM, which you could see on the camera there when I brought it in close. Now, by the way, these digital tachometers, they're really cheap. I'll throw a link in to the video and they're just so useful for actually seeing how your mower is revving. So the first thing that you wanna actually check, and I've already done that with this mower, is empty out the fuel, put fresh, two-stroke fuel in, and then put a new spark plug on. Well, I've done that with this mower as well. So I've got fresh fuel, a new spark plug, and it's still under revving. So the next thing we want to do is to actually check the carburetor. So with these mowers, they have the G4 Victor carburetor. It's right here. And what you want to do is you want to do a basic service on the carburetor. Now, anybody can do this. I've already done that to this one. So basically you've got this screw here, which is also the main jet. I've got plenty of videos on this. I'll link one into the description of this uh, video on how to do this. But you basically screw that screw out. You make sure that is cleaned with some carburetor cleaner. Really easy to do. And just give it a squirt inside the front of the carburetor. Then you put it back all together. But I've already done that to this mower and it's not the problem. So what we want to do is to investigate further into the G4 carburetor. Now I just happen to have one of these lying around the shed. So I've already taken this one off and I've actually checked there's a setting you can do on the inside what we call the pop-up valve. I've got other videos which I can link in and show you how to do that. But basically you rotate the carburetor off, you pull it off, it's not very hard. And then I'll just bring you in close on the camera so that you can see. But basically you've got this pop-up valve in here and you can rotate that pop-up valve. And there's three letters on it. There's an A, a B, and a C. Now an A is the slowest revving position. The C is the fastest revving position. And you put that letter so it actually faces out towards the face plate. This one doesn't have a face plate, but we'd put C facing out in that direction. I've already done that to this mower and it still runs as you see at that 2850, 2900 RPM. So therefore, we need to dig a little bit deeper into the carburetor. Now, inside here, there's a diaphragm and there's two springs either side of that diaphragm. Now, what those springs do, they actually control and regulate how far this poppet valve will come out and therefore how much fuel will go into the engine. So, if I just pop this outer shell off, you'll just see, it just comes off just like that quite easily and then straight away we can see this large governor spring now we can then pop this plate retaining plate off here just put a thumb in on the pop-up valve and that can just come off easily and then underneath this diaphragm i'll just get you in we won't actually take it out but you can see there's another spring inside now what i want to do is Victor actually states that you can have different tensions of this long spring. And I want to test the spring that's in this mower against a few other springs that I've got. So probably not surprising to some, I actually have a few of the long springs for the G4 carburetor lying around the place. Now what's interesting is the link actually changes, but don't let that fool you because 
when you compress the spring to go in the carburetor, it's probably down to about one centimeter. And I wouldn't dictate the relative strength by the actual length. But before we start randomly just swapping the long spring on this carburetor, what I've come up with is a way to test the relative strength. So I'll show you that right now. So as I said, when the long spring actually goes back into the carburetor, you can see that top cap goes on and there really is only probably about one centimeter, if that, of what that top spring will compress down to when it pops onto the carburetor. You can see what I've done there just to demonstrate as if I'd put that carburetor back together. So to test the relative strength, I just quickly knocked up this little bit of a jig here. Now that's just sitting just above these kitchen scales here. Now, when I lift that up, you can see I've actually bored just a little hole. Now that only goes in, you know, probably about 0.7 of a centimeter. And then I've got just enough clearance, probably now the 0.3 of a centimeter over the top of those kitchen scales there. So the idea is that we switch the kitchen scales on let the scales zero out and then we put the spring inside of our tool that we've manufactured here and we test how much it depresses the scales so let's start top to bottom with these three sample springs that i have and we'll write down how much force that'll exert on the kitchen scales here so we put the first one in compress it really carefully this is a little bit of a tricky part and then we just put that over the top Feel it go on, just like that. And we can see straight away that we've got on that one, a force of 367. All right, so let's go to a different spring. Pop this one out and we'll pop the smaller one in. Now with this smaller one, we've got 224. So I'll write down the 224 over here and then we'll go to the very last one keep them in order the bottom one and with this one just balance that around check underneath that it's still straight so for this one we've got 232 so there you go we've got the three different forces there so top to bottom and i'll just pop this spring out 232 so you can see we've got a big difference the top one then we come to the middle one 224 and 232 so quite a difference across these three springs now fortunately with the later model of these carburetors victor have been quite clever in that you don't have to disassemble the whole carburetor by taking this plate off you can just pop off that little end cap i'll just show you with this one here and you can put the long spring in like that so let's now take the long spring out of our lawn mile that's under revving and we'll do a comparison on our scales to our three other samples okay so let's pop that little black cap off the end of that g4 carburetor and just take the long spring out there we go that's just popped off nicely and there we go we've got the long spring out of our under revving victor two stroke so this is the one we just took out of the under revving mower and what's interesting is look at the difference in length straight away between these springs. This one we just took out is kind of in the middle. But like I said before, I don't actually care about the length. What I care about is actual the force, which it's going to exert when it's compressed. So now let's measure this one in our little jig over here. We've got the scales zeroed out and ready to go. So let's pop that in there now. Just compress it down like the same way I did for the others and then place that carefully over the top. And then straight away, look at this one. This one has only registered at 190, the one out of our Victor two stroke, which is under revving. So I'm gonna say, not surprisingly, whilst this is longer than all the rest, 190, it's under revving. So looking at these four springs, the big question is, which spring do I try first? Well, to be honest, I think I'm actually just going to try the 232. I think the 367 is just way off the mark for some reason. But let's to start with, come up to the 232 
and see what the lawnmower will rev at with this spring here. Let's pop it in now. So to install this long spring back into the G4 carburetor, it's actually really easy. We just want to put the spring into the black cap like that and then just feed it into the hole on that G4 carburetor and just push until it clicks. There we go. Now let's start it up, get our tachometer out and see what it revs at. Okay, so let's pop our digital tachometer on there again. Come around, give it a pull. So there you go folks, swapping that spring over to the higher tension spring as we've just done has taken this mower from revving at 2850 or 2900 RPM up to now 3450. Now that's actually fractionally faster than I really want. So we could do two things. We could actually set the poppet valve back to B or A, or you may have noticed that I skipped over one increment of spring. I've just gone and grabbed that one. So let's swap it back to the slightly softer spring but not back to the original and let's see what happens then with this other spring so we'll swap that over now just click that in there we go and now let's start it back up and see what it revs at with this spring There you go folks, by swapping that long spring in the G4 carburetor, we've actually now got this mower revving at what I think is a perfect RPM, just below that 3400 RPM. And we did that by testing the different governor springs with this little homemade jig and the kitchen scales. So if you have liked the video, please give us a like, drop a comment below. We just love reading all of the comments. And if you're interested in any other DIY things on lawn mowers or DIY around the home or maintaining and repairing your vehicle. On the channel, we've got the Mercedes, the Audi, the Mazda 3 and the early Ford Falcon. So if you're interested in any of that content, do subscribe to the channel. But until next time, have a good evening.